call to order the meeting of the West Valley City Council this evening. I'm Mayor Mike Winder and all members of the council are present this evening with us. And it's my turn for the opening ceremony. And I thought it'd be very appropriate tonight in light of the recent tragedies in Boston. And of course we've seen tragedies in recent months in, in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, there's been various shootings and acts of violence all over this country. And I just want to invite you to join me in a moment of silence for all who have lost their lives through violent acts in recent months. Thank you. Uh, by way of special recognitions, I see we have a good looking scout group with us tonight. Could the senior patrol leader of that group come up the microphone, please? Introduce the group. He's got the right sweatshirt on, I like it. Hello, my name is Fabian Zarate. We're Troop 11, 24 from the El Camino branch. Um, our scouts are Alexander Zarate, he goes to Valley Junior High, Devin Marias, APA, I go to West Valley Elementary, Jesus Cabrera, Drager High, Angel Perez, Valley Junior High, Daniel Jimenez, Valley Junior High, Andrew Jimenez, Granger High, Brian Sosa, Westlake Junior High, and Ari Mendoza, Granger High. Today we are here to accomplish our merit badge citizenship in the community. Thank you. Great, thank you. Welcome our scouts. Be sure to find your home on the giant uh, aerial photograph in the hall before you leave. That takes care of one of your requirements for you too on that badge. Good to have you. Uh, any other scouts or are we all part of the one big group? All the same group? All right, good. Okay, uh, we'll go to item five tonight. Oh, also, excuse me, by way of special recognitions, item four is we do have with us uh, Representative Janice Fisher, who represents West Valley Well in the legislature. If you want to just wave Janice, it won't make you <coughs> get off anything. It's always an honor to have you with us in our chambers. Item five tonight is the approval of our minutes. Council, we have April 2nd regular meeting to consider tonight. Move for approval of minutes of April 2nd. Second. Thank you both. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The minutes are approved. Item 6 cites our comment period and first we have our public comment period. And the portion of this is if you've come to address us on any issue except for something that will be in the public hearing later. And so if I mention your name and you're actually here for another item in a public hearing later, we'll, we'll have you just wait a moment. Um, let's see, Lawrence Apotion signed up, but I believe you're for the item a little later. <coughs> Matt Apotion, Dan Apotion, the same, presumably. Okay, uh, Odine Christiansen. Are you here for an item on a public hearing later? Oh. For that one, okay, so if you can hang tight as well. Patrick Powers, are you here for a different item? or? Uh, yes, for a different item. Okay, and, and Josh. You, you here for? Is there a talk? Well, come on up. <laughs> and you know the drill. State your name and address for our minutes, and let us know what's on your mind. Yeah, you have up to five minutes. Thank you. Josh Sherman, and my new address, sorry, West Valley, is 2749 South Lake Street, Salt Lake City, Utah, 4106. So me and my wife bought a house in December. It's spring, so I wanted to come back and say hello. So with that being said, there are a few things I want to address that are very positive in the city. And that's what I want to focus on as well, is the things that are happening. So I made a list. Um, the animal shelter is moving to a no-kill facility, which I encourage and I applaud everyone for doing that. Uh, Petzl International is moving to West Valley, which is a uh, company backpacking and outdoor recreation that I applaud as well. We already have backcountry, and I think this could be a really good you know, founding company for future progress in our city. Embassy Suites, thank you Mike Winder and uh, everyone who worked on that project, I applaud that as well. Uh, the plaza here that we is beautiful, it welcomes everyone in the track station that's finished and accomplished. Uh, Cultural Celebration Historical Bridge, which I just learned about, which you also are taking the reins on that. And Stormwater Advisory Board, which I hope to make this Thursday, which is a huge <coughs> concern of mine where that goes and the pollution it causes. 
Um, and the final thing, which is the skate park. Thank you all for moving forward. It's been a long, tough draw on this. Uh, Kevin Astle and Greg, we met this week and we've been meeting, this is our second meeting. We're trying to organize and basically get a board going so we can have community input, we can have designs drawn up, and we can have the funding in place from the county, which is Promise um, 365. And then we also have some money from the city to accomplish that. And I want to work with the city as well that citizens can pay into through our PayPal account, which the button has been set up for that, to get memorial uh, bricks as well to hopefully go into that park. So moving forward, next Monday on Earth Day, I would like to organize the skate community that I'm part of and invite anyone here to come out and clean up that place. We cleaned it up last week with Karen. And I just want to do it again to show that we are invested in this project and we really want to move forward with it with the help of the city and also with the help of the community. And then we have to move forward with the plans for this, have more input so that everyone you know, can go forward feeling responsible for the project and, and indebted to it and part of it. So that's all. I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. It's a loss for us to have you move out of the city, but we appreciate you being not too far away and you still be involved to help a lot of these great projects move forward. Let's see, we had one other name sign up to speak today, Gundy Jones. And you've been in our chambers before, so you know the drill. Uh, name and address, and then let us know what's on your mind. Yep, I'm still Gundy Jones, 4396 South, 3200 West, uh, West Valley City, Utah. And I traveled for the last 10 or 12 days to Virginia, Washington, D.C. And guess what news reached me? Everything that went on in West Valley City. And in view of what has happened in Boston and everywhere, you know, I became a little bit concerned and a little bit sad. There are few people that do some very bad things. But if the majority of people are very good people. And if that spoke to my daughter, my son-in-law is a liaison from the Air Force um, to the CIA and the Pentagon, and you know, they both have been around West Valley City, and, and we discussed it, and I said, we have a great mayor, we have a good city council, we have some really good people moving forward and doing things, and we're improving all the time. And they had visited last year, and they were really impressed with what was happening in the city. And so I think when things are going on, we need to remember that. Uh, we need to not look for someone that we can blame and shoulder everything on and to satisfy public opinion and everything else, serve somebody's head on a platter. I think that's not really judicial. I think without any proof or any concrete information, lots of people taking pot shot and guessing things. And I think we need to be a very judicial community. We need to stick together. We have so much to be proud of and so much to work towards that we can be just this great city. We're the second greatest city in the state of Utah. We need to get some backbone, stick together. There could be a citizen committee that uh, has some power of investigation when it comes to the police department. Perhaps report once a month to the public in, in the form of the West Valley newspaper. Judicial people who are not jumping long distance jumps to conclusion that uh, base their opinion and information on really hard found evidence. I just want to voice my support for this city. I love this city. I love where I live. Um, I love the people that I do community services with and projects. And there might be corruption in, in different areas and police department. I have no idea to tell you the truth. But I also have to say every one of my experiences with West Valley Police has been positive, even when I was at fault and received a ticket. <laughs> I, <laughs> they always treated me very politely. They always gave me information. And when I looked totally innocent, they kind of smiled at me and said, yeah, but, oh, OK. They were always very polite when they had to come to my home and just a little teeny personal example, I have six children. I'm, I raised a Navajo boy, and then I have four boys of my own, and one daughter stuck in the middle, my Jenny back. 
I try to raise my children all in the same manner. I try to teach them loyalty, discipline, religious value, integrity, and yet one of my sons chose to be on drugs. I did everything I could to persuade him not to. I'm sure he damaged people in this community and others. I know he damaged us a lot. He stole from us. And I had to turn to the courts for help, and it was uh, Judge Stoney, actually, who helped me quite a bit. He put him in the CATS program in jail. Um, I, I had boys leaving on missions. I had scholars in my, of my kids that achieved great things. And I sat outside the Salt Lake County Jail the first time, and I visited my boy. And I cried and I cried, and I looked when I came in like a raccoon on a rampage. All my mascara ran down my face. I was so heartbroken. And I, I tell you honestly, I did everything I could to stop him. But you know what? He had his free agency. As a referred responsibility, we cannot be responsible for everybody's action everywhere. There is a chain of command, and he was an adult. He was married and had children, and yet I tried to cover all the bases, and I couldn't. He made decisions on his own. I'm happy to tell you that he's four and a half years clean and sober. He is now the manager of a three office building and has a new little baby. We never gave up on him. So let's not give up on each other and the strength that we have in this city and the, the way that we can all progress. And let's stick together. Let's not make rash judgment. And let's just go by what we really know and it's really proven and not have suggestions of what might have happened. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Jones. I always appreciate having you stop by. Um, we come to item B tonight, no, which is... Mayor Winder? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was actually, when you asked me, I was another issue but for the public comment portion. Okay. Uh, please come forward. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for stopping it before we moved on. Um, Patrick Powers, 3990 South Howick Street. Um, some of you, if you're very familiar with the map of West Valley, I'm actually not from West Valley. Um, however, I do represent an organization that represents the opinions and concerns of many West Valley residents. And so I'm hoping that you'll still um, keep an open mind as I address you. Um, the purpose I have in coming here tonight um, is to discuss with you and hopefully get some feedback from you um, on concerns that I personally, as well as um, many of my colleagues have, about the West Valley Police Department. Um, it, given the recent um, highly publicized criticisms and accusations against the police department um, and then the ongoing investigations into certain um, recent incidents and even past incidents, um, it's fairly obvious to the casual observer that in the West Valley Police Department there is an accountability issue um, as far as um, holding those responsible for misconduct it seems that it just isn't happening quite to the standard that we would expect from a great city like West Valley. One of the most startling revelations that we think has come to light in recent months is the fact that for many years now, West Valley has actually had in place a professional standards review board um, that it is assumed kind of is tasked with oversight of the police department. Um, the article that I was able to read in the Salt Lake Tribune, however, highlights some of the obvious inadequacies of that review board. What we would like to suggest is that the council on its part, um, obviously this is an issue for the mayor and the police department to be working on constantly. However, the council, I believe, um, can do its part in resolving some of these issues by considering a complete restructuring of that review board. Um, after reviewing a lot of the other models that seem to be working across the country, it seems that there are certain key factors that go into really allowing those review boards to hold the police department accountable for those 
periodic abuses of power, accusations of corruption, things of that nature. Um, one of those is that the police department itself, um, though we always like to give them the benefit of the doubt, they are brave men and women who brave these streets every day in an attempt to protect and serve us. Um, however, in order to ensure that ultimate objectivity is maintained, it's important to make sure that the police department is not unnecessarily involved in the selection, um, the nomination process of those who serve on the board. It's also essential that complaints be, rather than funneled through the police department, there needs to be the possibility of making those complaints against the police department directly to that review board. Um, on top of that, not that this is actually seen in any review board in the country today, but the consideration of allowing those review board positions to be elected positions would go even further toward ensuring that the residents of West Valley are actually those who are um, who are responsible for holding the police department accountable for their actions. Um, on top of that, um, giving the review board some teeth, so to speak, uh, is going to be another important step in the right direction. As is, members of the review board are uh, vetted by the police department and then uh, their nominations confirmed by you fine folks. Um, after that, um, the police department then has, it seems, a fairly good amount of discretion in the cases that they're bringing to the review board. Yeah, 30 seconds. Okay, no problem. Wrap it up. Um, and so the fact that there is that potential moral hazard there when all of those complaints are being funneled through the police department, um, and then on top of that, the review board, even if they were to see something fishy, they lack an independent investigator that could help them further uncover information that they would need to make a final call on that. And then even if they were able to discover that something serious has been done, something worthy of discipline, they have no authority to discipline those officers. It all goes back to the discretion of the department itself. So if those problems are systemic enough, you run into, again, that moral hazard, those, you know, that potential for cover up there. Um, and so I'd just like to get your comments on that, your opinions. Um, and then also I'd like to offer myself, as well as my organization's help, if you guys are interested in pursuing a restructuring of your review board. Great, thank you. And uh, I believe I said this at the beginning, if not, I, I normally give this disclaimer. The comment period is a time for us to receive input and feedback. It isn't necessarily a back and forth time, although we will have city manager and city council comments momentarily, and, and if others don't address your concerns, I'll certainly say something at that point. Uh, did we have anyone else sign up to speak in the public comment period today on anything not in the public hearings later? Okay, with that we'll go to 6B then city manager comments. Mr. Pyle, anything you'd like to say on any topic today? Sure, thank you, Mayor. I'll just make a couple of quick comments. First, I wanted to thank Josh and Ms. Jones for both being here. wasn't expecting to see you, but it's nice to see you. And, and definitely do appreciate um, once in a while hearing some positive commentary about the city when it's appropriate and certainly we want to hear that when it's appropriate so thank you for that and then second I just wanted to comment a little bit to Mr. Powers's uh, request and observations and first I wanted to thank him for the way in which your concerns were very respectfully expressed uh, here before this body we appreciate that thanks very much I also wanted to make just a quick comment about the nature of the Professional Standards Review Board. I'll try to be quick. I know we've already done this before and, and tried to get this uh, uh, broadcast out there, but this is probably another good uh, avenue with which to do that and then talk a little bit about uh, further look at the PSRB. So uh, first, our Professional Standards Review Board was a body that was set up by the police department as an extra layer of uh, review and recommendation for officer discipline and case review back some almost 20 years ago it seems like to my memory now and uh, at the time what that focus was for was simply for that purpose another layer of accountability which was spoken to uh, um, by as so to speak an outside entity although there are certainly concerns uh, about how that is set up at, currently at this time as it was envisioned then 
the idea was to get some citizens involved in looking at a process that already was um, conducted pretty much internally to just the police department without any further review. And that focus was internal. It wasn't to set up for the purpose of transparency or reporting to the public or, or any other purpose along those lines. Uh, I will say that throughout the history of the PSRB, they've been very good and very effective and not um, a rubber stamp or a, a uh, rubber stamp for police actions or, or a cheerleader for police actions uh, as one might have gathered from the media reporting that uh, occurred a couple of weeks ago. They have made recommendation uh, for all levels of discipline up including up to and including termination of officers many times throughout the years of their existence. And I think that's a uh, point that might have been skipped over in some of that media reporting, so I wanted to make sure that that was out there. Um, however, it is also true that the nature of their body is recommend, recommend only in nature. They do not have uh, adjudicating or uh, disciplinary um, authority within the department or over the police department. Um, as to what kind of setup the PSRB ought to have now, um, I think a lot of those concerns that Mr. Powers addressed have actually been also a set of concerns which the elected officials in the body here have addressed or are concerned about and have asked for recommendation and addressing on by the staff and, and review within the police department, which we have done. Uh, we have made a recommendation to the council as of about a week ago, I believe it was, and and uh, the council wanted to, time to deliberate on that and then get back together and meet as a body and act or decide, decide on those recommendations that were made, some of which are the very recommendations that Mr. Powers voiced, others are not included. But one of the other points I wanted to make was that uh, memo and those recommendations were made available to the media at the time, and you're certainly welcome to have a copy of uh, what those are. So we appreciate those comments. Thank you for the the the, the uh, commentary and the concern. We do take that seriously. And uh, Mayor, that's all I have. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, item 6C, City Council comments. Colleagues, anything you'd like to add to okay. Mr. Vincent? Yes, I, I'd like just to take a, just a few moments and, and, and just uh, uh, thank our police department uh, for the, the good work that they do. Uh, we have a very large police department, over uh, 200 in the, the department, and and for a handful of uh, officers to to um, uh, define the entire department is 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 not a fair thing. And we have very fine officers out there every day doing the work for the citizens. They interact with our neighborhood associations. They have good relationships with our our neighborhoods, and uh, we have. From, from our clerks all the way to our, our, our traffic and beat officers. We have very outstanding police officers, and I just want to thank them for the work that they do and let them know that uh, as, as, as one council member, I, I, I want them to know that I appreciate the work that they do, and, and I don't let uh, a handful of officers define the entire department. Thank you. Well said. Uh, other comments from council today? Mr. Christensen. I'd just like to echo and say amen to, to Steve's uh, comments. Uh, the department is a, a great department and you know we, we applaud them for what they do every day and that stuff doesn't get into the media the way the, the quote-unquote exciting stuff does. And, but they're out there slugging it out every day and working as hard as they can both, both police and fire. And we never hear about the good things that they do every day. And secondly, I'd just like to uh, publicly announce, if nobody else has uh, read it in the paper yet, but West Valley is now connected to the airport directly by that track train that just pulled out. And its destination is the airport. And we'd like to see uh, if you need to go to the airport, there's an easy way to get there. And it's a little less expensive than a taxi and or parking. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Anyone else on the Council? Okay, great. We'll go to item 7 today. Uh, we, we have several public hearings. The first one, 7A, is regarding GPZ-1-2013. Now, this one's re related to Ordinance 1315, 
and Ordinance 1316. Mr. Pyle, if you could please introduce this matter before I open the public hearing. Thank you, sir. So we have a proposed general plan change as well as a proposed zone change, and this would be from low density residential to non-retail commercial in the general plan instance, and the zone change itself would be from A or agricultural to RB or residential business. The address of the projects at 4110 South and 4130 South at 3600 West it involves a parcel of 1.68 acres. Okay, thank you. I now open the public hearing at a gathered public input regarding application GPZ 1 2013 which is related to Ordinance 1315 and Ordinance 1316. Is there anyone who's come to speak on this matter, for or against? Sir? Come on up to the microphone, and, and just like the other commenters, please state your name and address uh, for our records, please. Dale Bennett with uh, Benchmark Engineering. My address is 9130 South State in Sandy. I'm actually representing Ryan Anderton. He's out of town, and I'm able to be here, so I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. On the, on the property. I've been working with him on the survey and the conceptual uh, design for the proposed usage. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Great. Right. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Um, you may want to just sit on the front row there in case the council does have questions. So when we get to that, you could pop up easily. Is there anyone else who's come to speak on this matter? Okay. Council, before I close the public hearing, do you have any questions for Mr. Bennett? Looks like you're off the hook tonight. I'll close the public hearing and uh, now turn it over to the council. Uh, or first, we'll take ordinance 13 15. What's your pleasure there, colleagues? I'd like to make a comment about uh, both of these ordinances and having looked at uh, the proposed project last week, knowing that the Planning Commission approved it as well, uh, I still uh, would speak against it. Uh, because I'm against the parcel by parcel commercialization of 4100 South, also the parcel by parcel commercialization of 3600 West, which right now is a two lane residential road and uh, may, within 15 years or so, if we're not careful, be a four or six lane 4100 South. And uh, without uh, having some long term cohesive plans in that area, I am uh, not willing to approve a one parcel change. Okay, thank you. Are there others who have comments on this one? I, I would like to just make a comment. As, as I look at this parcel and I, I look at uh, the, the commercial that's on the corner there where the uh, uh, Ranger Clinic is, uh, and then there's the, the one street that that is directly uh, east of there. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, that we're kind of sandwiching that uh, one little street between two commercial areas. So I, I too would, would not be in favor of, of this this change. Okay, thank you. Are there any other council members who would like to make a comment for a motion? Mayor, I move for denial of ordinance uh, number 1315. Second. Okay, is there any who'd like to speak against that motion or for that motion? I'll speak against the motion. Um, I think that where this property is, it's, it's very logical along 41st South on the corner there that you have an RB zone, a residential business zone. And it does not make sense that that's long-term agriculture there on the corner. Uh, the, the property owners have been very responsible with the daycare next door and, and how they've maintained that property. And I anticipate that responsibility would continue uh, to the north with this parcel. And being along 41st South, I think it's unrealistic for us to expect that to remain agriculture or to have one more house that can pass yeah. it back on to 41st South. I think having a BRB is very appropriate. And the majority of the Planning Commission save one agreed with that as well. So I'd encourage my colleagues to uh, vote down the motion to deny and, and hopefully approve it. Is there anyone else who would like to weigh in on this or questions for staff, comments, anything? Mr. 
direction. You know, I, I'll just I speak to this. I'd maybe is just some explanation and to where my vote will be coming through on, on this two uh, ordinances is that, uh, you know, back in February, whenever it was, I mean, when I brought my five biggest issues to the city, it was, what are we going to do with 4100 South? And I don't disagree with a lot of what the mayor is saying to where, um, you know, I, I think there could be some good uses here uh, to, to augment and, and support the, uh, the, the medical clinic by and some of the other commercial uses that are by there, but because it is, uh, you know, the question that uh, immediately pops into my mind is what happens with, with Andrew Drive, which is sandwiched in there and been sandwiched in other developments, and how does that fit our long-term plans on 4100 South? And because we really don't have the long-term plans for 4100 South really firmly defined, I, I feel this is kind of planning by putting the cart before the horse. And so to where, you know, I can, I can see in the, in the future of this being a, a very uh, a, a appropriate use um, with, with some other things, I think, uh, in lack of just that uh, larger vision and with the potential impacts to the lone residential sex street there of Andrew Drive, I'll be voting no on both of these ordinances as well. Hey, any other comments on this? I guess my question is, with the daycare to the south, what is an appropriate use, um, more appropriate than a business, an office complex? It, I mean, right across the street, we've got the Harmon Home, a similar type business, well, not business, but a similar type of use. And I don't see residential being practical on this corner. And so I think it would be more responsible to approve a office complex then some other things, a gas station, there's uses that would be totally inappropriate for this corner. But I think as a neighbor to the residential and the uses around it, I think this is a very appropriate use for this property. Cool. Thank you. you know, I, I tend to agree. You have, I think it's, I, I respect Councilmember Rushton's concern as we talk about needing a plan for the corridor, but it's also unfair to private property owners to say, sorry, we don't have our act together as a city yet to plan that to the degree that we want, therefore we're going to just deny everything until we get to that point. And so I think in, in the spirit of private property rights, if someone's making a reasonable and responsible request, I think it behooves us to grant it. I'd also add too that it's very rare that we overturn a planning commission decision one way or the other. When you have a near unanimous decision in favor like this, it's with great hesitancy that I would ever want to overturn it. Yeah. And Mayor, I guess I would respond you know, to that is that you know, really the, the long term and the general plan goals, although we take input from the Planning Commission, um, something as large as the, the, the one of the major five goals that the city's come up with, you know, is, is really something that they haven't weighed in on and, I, uh, and it, it, something that we haven't even expressed to them what we do want to do with the 4100 South Corridor. So they're taking, they're, they're taking, uh, they're doing the best they can you know, with limited information, and, and uh, you know, I agree that it's, you know, it, it could very well be a limited use, and yeah, it's unfortunate that 4100 South has been uh, morphed into what it is today, which is basically by this, uh, by the, yeah, this is good enough, and we'll just move forward, and it's, and it's uh, really uh, had a, a life of its own taken on, and, and I guess I'm to the point where, yeah, enough is enough on it, and, and I'm, you know, I, I hate to hold up progress and and, uh, and install somebody's ideas for what's going on in the corner, but uh, you know, I really, we, I, I hope if anything, this puts a little more urgency to the city uh, developing that plan, and so uh, we can first go through with a vision of it instead of just letting development, you know, control where our vision goes. And I would add to Mr. Rushton's comments that you know, this is a there are four buildings on four corners and. Three of them are houses, and one is the Harmon Home, which is basically a day use. This uh, project would have to have access from 36 West, not 4100 South. Across the street from this are one, two, three homes, homes all the way down the street, and they would be impacted by this commercial development. We're not telling them to uh, change the use. If we deny a change in the use, we're just uh, saying we it's it's agriculture what's her home what's residential now and that's an appropriate use in that residential area 
until and unless we have an overall plan for good development along those two corridors. I'll just go back to it. I mean, to, to just, you know, I hate to compare apples and oranges, but I think it's kind of ironic that we had more of a battle for the residents that lived on 3500 South and 5600 West, uh, which is, you know, if not the most busiest, the busiest corner in the whole, uh, the whole city, and trying to look out for the, the residents that, uh, that are back onto some of the commercial there, to where you have a lot more of an egregious situation with Andrew Street there. That, uh, the situation that they're being placed in, uh, you know, in comparison to, to what went on 5600 West. So I guess in good conscience, I can't say, yeah, what, what went on at 5600 West is one thing and Andrew Drive is another. I think I'm trying to hold it to at least somewhat of a, a, a similar standard. And I think to Councilman Mueller's uh, comment about the access is, is off of a residential street. Also, I think as you, as you look at uh, exiting off of that residential street with the now left-hand turn lane from 4100 South onto Bangator, that transition happens right at that location. And so I think uh, there's some dif difficult choices uh, for that piece of property, but uh, I think it does go back to uh, Councilman Rushton's discussion about the larger plan for 4100 South and, and uh, solving that issue before we, we uh, piecemeal of all these, these corners. There's uh, been a lot of comment up here, and I see Mr. Bennett itching to re reply to some of the, the comments that were made. Um, Council, any objections if we let him, if we reopen the public hearing briefly, let him address some of these things that have been raised? No objection? Okay. Go on, just take a moment then, sir. I got a little area and I just wanted to pass a couple of these out. Just so you can see. These are kind of some of the local areas. That this other one's been printed out quite well. Most of them. Majority of the intersections along 4100 have some sort of commercial development in it, and 3600 West, you know, the the residential across the street, that the professional office would be similar, and there would be mostly a daytime use, and that could be limited to daytime use for that matter, and it'd be a lot better than putting in like a 7-Eleven or something like that, I think, which is what you guys are opposed to. But having a having a residence, an actual single-family residents on that corner just doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever you know in the in this area with the daycare on that and then on the other side and everything that's going on and the major intersection that's just west of that and so i just wanted to you know that yeah that they could do a lot of studying and i think this this is a residential business so it's kind of a low key and it's you know the professional office would would match up with what kind of is in that area really close by and and the daytime usage. So, thank you. Right, thank you. Hi, Mayor. Yes. We're talking a lot about the the Andrew Street uh, residence there. I know when we contemplated the uh, continuous flow intersection, they came out and they were letting their feelings be heard and, and understood. Uh, have we heard from them at all on, on any of this? I haven't seen any comments either in the Planning Commission or here from them. Could I make a comment later? Sure. I was at the pl Planning Commission and there, there were a number of neighbors that were in that neighborhood that were there and they were concerned but yet when we met with them afterwards they were all, you know, willing to work with us on, on this and, and, it, and, and it shows by them not being here now, I think that they have realized that the, it's probably the better use for that property. Thank you. Um, okay, well, we'll close this little mini public hearing we had here. Council, any? Uh, just, just, a, just a comment, I think this, I think this actually illustrates the problem. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you look at the, the boxes that he's drawn here and and I think it illustrates the whole problem on 4100 South. I mean, and uh, where we got a piece here, a piece there, a piece there. And there's just, 
there's no cohesiveness to to what's happening there. And so uh, I, I'm still not swayed. Well, and I mean, name another spot in the city that has that. I mean, that, that there is a one. And I guess to Councilman Christensen's point of looking at the looking at the uh, back to the planning commission notes. I mean, I have. Uh, a resident of 4139 Andrew Drive came and was opposed on 4137 Andrew Drive opposed. We did have somebody that uh, did favor it on 3600 West, but uh, you know, so I, I think there, there's been there's been discussion on uh, you know through this and throughout the neighborhood. So if you look at this map and it's it doesn't make sense to be just residential that backs into the street. It that isn't ever going to tie into Andrew Drive. I'm not sure what else you'd put here that would make more sense than RV. Well, I, I don't know if that's not the best choice, but until we have some sort of solution to the whole problem, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or new information? Okay, then let's call the question on, again, the motion is to deny, and uh, let's do a roll call vote, Ms. McKendrick. Mr. Vincent? Yes. Mrs. Lang? No. Mr. Bueller? Aye. Mr. Hughes? No. Mr. Rushton? Aye. Mr. Christensen? No. Mr. Lerner? No. Okay, so the motion to deny fails by a vote of four to three. Uh, so again, we're talking ordinance 1315. Is there anyone who would like to make any other motions? Then I will make the opposite motion to approve. Ordinance 13-15. Uh, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion of this motion besides all of us repeating the same arguments in reverse? Okay, let's take this one by roll call vote then as well. Mr. Vincent? No. Mrs. Lang? Yes. Mr. Mueller? No. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Rushton? No. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Yes, so it is approved, Ordinance 1315, uh, 4 to 3. Uh, we come to Ordinance 1316. Mr. Pilot, if you want to tee that up for us, please. Thank you, sir. So this is the zoning portion of the same issue that you were just discussed. Okay, so again, 1315 for you scouts was amending our city general plan, and then 1316 is the actual amending of the zone. So all the arguments you heard for and against 1315 would be pretty cohesive with 1316. So everyone would like to make a motion on this one? I'll move for approval of <clears throat> ordinance 13-16. Second. So, thank you both. Any discussion of this motion? I guess I would say that since we have a, a approved a general plan change, even though I, my opinion, not much of a plan, but it is, it is changed that you know it, it makes sense to support the, uh, the uh, going forward with the uh, actual zone change now. Okay, any other comments? And okay, let's roll call this one as well, please, Ms. McKendrick. Mr. Vincent? No. Mrs. Lang? Yes. Mr. Mueller? No. Yes. Mr. Rushton? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Yes, so the yeses have it on that one, five to two. Congratulations. But let this discussion also uh, serve to the staff as a reminder of how serious we are in that one goal of having a strategic planning goal for 41st South and that corridor as it continues to evolve through the years. Good discussion, everyone. All right, uh, we will, let's see, Mr. Pyle, if you could please now introduce application ZT-1-2013 and this one's related to Ordinance 13-17, and then we'll have a public hearing on that one. Thank you, sir. So this ordinance would amend Title VII of the West Valley City Municipal Code, specifically uh, Section 7-1-103 and 7-2-130 for the purpose of addressing cargo containers and their use in residential and agricultural zones. The ordinance proposes to uh, restrict cargo containers uh, as they are defined in the proposed ordinance for use in storage in residential zone neighborhoods. Um, and I don't know if the council would like to go over or define what that is from a definition standpoint, but uh, basically they're the type of shipping containers you would see shipped overseas or on a railroad uh, car, that sort of thing. 
that does not um, disband the use or propose to not allow the use for temporary residential storage containers uh, for example, the pod type thing, uh, which would be allowed and is allowed under our ordinance right now for purposes temporarily of moving or construction use. And I think it says two weeks right now on that. 14 days for moving purposes, six months for remodeling and construction. Okay, thank you. I now open the public hearing regarding application ZT1 2013, which is appertaining to ordinance 13-17. Has anyone come to speak on that matter today? Mr. Markham, please come forward. You know the drill. Hi, Jerry Um I want to support Mr. Pyle from the city. I don't think we should have shipping containers in neighborhoods. I don't think we should have shipping containers in agriculture. If agriculture needs storage, they build a barn. That's what agriculture is. It's farming, it's agriculture, you build a barn. Don't bring in shipping containers to put your tractor in. Um, and as far as the pod issue goes, there's one in my neighborhood that's been sitting in a guy's driveway for, I know, six months, and I don't know why it's there. Um, but it looks much better than some other things that are sitting in the neighborhoods. Um, I can't seem to clean them with those up either. Um, but yeah, I don't think we should have these shipping containers. They're ugly. They're horrible. Um, I bought one and had to put on a piece of property I have up in the mountains and regret doing it. I'm going to get rid of it. It doesn't even fit up there. So we're on this side and put a roof on it so that it, it fits in the, the location, but they don't belong in uh, neighborhoods. People have now even gone to buying the back ends off of box, tr box trucks and setting those in their yards with the cargo doors exposed. And I think those should be looked at as far as uh, shipping containers also. If they're not pretty, they rust, they're ugly, they shouldn't be in the neighborhood or in agriculture. Um, and I just say that because I have a piece of agricultural property behind my house now at approximately 3010 West on 4100 South, the old Mackey Dairy property that has now in, moved into a second generation and this has, piece of property has turned into a catch-all. Um, that the single home on the property now is multiple person dwelling, I picture it to be similar to the one we had the murder in on Redwood Road. Uh, people not knowing people, uh, somebody that owns it has tore down a restaurant someplace and they brought in all of the stainless steel sinks, tubs, dumped them in the property, which is not agriculture, down trees, laying in the property, um, unlicensed cars sitting on the lawn, which is not agriculture. Um, if it's an agriculture piece of property, I think we need to make sure there's part of it being farmed or something done with it as agriculture. Um, I still have to contend with the irrigation ditch that goes through my backyard. And I know you can't say anything about a person's irrigation water because you can mess with their wife before you can mess with their water. <laughs> but if it's agriculture, it's agriculture. I'm not sure we can contain or park anymore. Thanks. Okay. And also something I'd like to add, this little thing that you passed out, Mayor. Yeah. Could, how is this republished to everybody that's not here? Well, this is uh, regarding the neighborhood meetups. Uh -huh. uh, I understand in the journal we're publicizing it on, through our social media. There's posters around City Hall and our city facilities. Uh, different council members are helping spread the word too. Because so. I just mentioned too, um, I got a brain glitch. Aaron? No, uh, on our, on our uh, garbage bills. That would be a perfect example to put stuff like this into because everybody sees their bill. That could be an avenue of public notice, could notify people of our garbage uh, pickups, our regulations, rules, regulations. One site could be in Spanish, one site could be in English, or we could do multiple mailings. There you go. Thank everybody you. Council uh, actually had a good idea along well. those lines, Mike, and I'm going to give them credit for that, and we're actually looking at doing that right now. Okay. Thanks for your time. Guys. Great minds think alike. Thank you. All right, is anyone else here to speak for or against Ordinance 1317? Okay. If not, I will close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure on this one? Mayor, move for approval of Ordinance 1317. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Any discussion there? Just want to reiterate what I mentioned in the study meeting. Received a lot of uh, resident input via email, a few phone calls, uh, you know, in person things talking about this issue as as uh, you know, neighborhoods and uh, the vitality of our neighborhoods is a very important issue and uh, the general consensus was is that uh, um, the majority of residents uh, are, are in favor of 
uh, that's taking a, a stronger and bolder look in, in enforcement towards uh, industrial storage containers. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, all in favor of approving 1317 say aye. Aye. That appears to be unanimous. Our uh, last public hearing of the night is related to ZT-2-2013, which is the one related to Ordinance 1318. Mr. Weil. Thank you, sir. So this is a proposed zone text amendment that would, uh, zone text amendment to the A zone that would allow for assembly repair and service of turf farm equipment as a conditional use. So we do have a specific project that we are uh, considering, or at least is the initiating reason for looking at this ordinance change, but this would apply to all agricultural zones. Um, and if I can just summarize this really quickly, so basically assembly repair and service to turf farm related equipment on a turf farm of five to ten acres would be considered, and there would be various restrictions with the council has heard and, and can discuss or ask questions about if they would like. And um, all the various issues including size of the building, acreage, uh, screening, landscaping, hours of operation, all of these are things that uh, were considered in the consideration of this, this uh, application. Okay, thank you. I'll now open the public hearing uh, regarding Ordinance 1318. Is there anyone here? I suspect there are people here who'd like to speak on this one. Who would like to be first? Mr. Hoshin? You've seen the routine tonight. Name and address. Yes. <coughs> My name is Lawrence Hoshin. I live at 6570 West, 3500 South in West Valley City. I have been, I have operated a business, a nursery business and a sod business at that address since 1975. And our family has been a part of West Valley City since before it was a city. This particular project that we're trying to do was submitted by my son, Steve Apotion, who's out of the state, and asked me if I would discuss this matter with you. Steve has <clears throat> designed and engineered and built an automated sod harvester. It's a rather large machine, and it's a machine that would be used on large sod farms. He put together a team of engineers and they designed this rather remarkable machine. And if I could just tell you briefly about the sod harvesting machinery that is used, there's two places in the world that make the, a machine that is similar to this machine. One of them is in Canada, the other is in Billings, Montana. We want to have a third place where this machine is built, and that would be here in West Valley City. The machine is a rather unique machine because it is, it is very high-tech, and it's an automated machine. Uh, when we built the prototype in our shop on the farm, and we tested it on our sod farm, which is 30 miles south of Tooele, and I can remember when Steve came in a year ago one night, he came to me and he said, would you like to see this machine working? And I said, yes. And he showed the machine going down the field, cutting the sod, stacking the sod, dropping the pallets, putting new pallets on, and doing the entire harvesting process. And I asked him, who's driving the machine? And he said, I'm driving the machine, I just got out and took pictures of it doing this. The machine steers itself down the field and does all of these robotic uh, things in order to harvest this. The only thing that the operator really does is he sits in a swivel chair and watches the computer and he has to turn the machine around at the end of the field. He also watches the sod come up the conveyor belt. When the sod comes up the conveyor belt, if he sees a piece of sod he doesn't like, he pushes the button and that tells the robotic arm in the back, don't pick that piece up and it drops off the back. Now this may not seem rather significant to you, but today Steve's down in, in uh, Bay City, Texas, where we took the first production model of this machine and it's working on a farm down there. And the farms in the south have to have their sod 
cutting slabs. It will not roll because of the type of sod they have. And this is a slab machine, which is very significant. There are automated roll machines on the market, but those roll machines uh, are much simpler with the robotics than a slab machine. This farm that he's at down in Texas today, the man told us that he harvests a hundred semi-loads every day, and all of it is hand-stacked. He has 90 people that do nothing but stack sod on pallets all day long. This machine will do it for them. This one farm, and there's many of them down there, produce more sod than all the sod farms in Utah put together. And the reason I mention this is that the market for this machine is not really in Utah. It will be used in Utah, but there's possibly only 10 farms in the entire state that could use a machine like this. But down there, and other places in the world, there's hundreds of places that they could use this machine. We've had calls from all over the world, Israel, Canada, Europe, Japan, Australia, there are people who are very excited who have seen this machine. And I would also mention to you that the other two people, the other two farm or companies that make automated sod harvesters, they have been fighting each other tooth and nail. For, they, they, they have a hateful relation to each other. They have had legal arguments with each other. They have, uh, they have fought over patents. They have fought over every aspect of, their, of this farm, of, of this, the machines that they make. A month ago, these two, these two uh, manufacturers bound together to try to stop Firefly from building these machines. They will not succeed, and the people who have put the money up for this uh, project that we're doing, uh, the investors have made the comment that that's a very good sign because they are literally shaking in their boots. This machine that he has invented is the finest sod machine in the world, period. And if I could, if I had the time, I won't get into it, but I could show you why it's the finest. The engineering is most unique. He put together a team of four engineers. Uh, one of them has four degrees from MIT. He taught engineering at the University of Utah for 30 years, and they've been out to my place for a year designing and manufacturing and building this this side machine. It is a very unique, very high-tech machine. Uh, the reason that we want to do it in the agriculture zone, and what we're asking for is a change, uh, not in zoning, but we're asking that there be a text change which would allow us to uh, do this as a conditional use on a farm. And the reason we need to do it is because we need to have a sod, we need to have a sod farm right next to the factory so that this machine can be tested. Right now, we take it to our farm, which is too far away and it's too big. We have to have special permits to even move it. By the time we take it out to the farm and then have people go out there, and if they're going back and forth, it's not very practical. The other two manufacturers both have them on a piece of property where they have a five to ten, at least a five to ten acre test, test facility, and that's what we would like to be able to do. Now, when I say that it's oversized, it is not very much oversized. It's not over height, it's not over weight. It's a few inches over width, but it still would require a special permit to move it. And, and that's no small item when, when we consider all of the technology that has to be tested and, and tweaked as they develop this machine. Uh, one of the things I'd also point out that we, we have semis going in and out of our property because of the sod business we have there uh, all day, all season long. Uh, and they would be on the same truck, basically. Uh, it would, our driveway that goes down there and would be about 500 feet off, the, off of 35th South, we have a 20-foot road that goes down the side of the property that, that uh, they would be able to go in and out on. But we do need that sod field in order to, to do this. Um, 
I, I think one of the questions, one of the reasons we didn't want to try to make a zoning change is because the, the question that came up was, well, what if Firefly were to move or something? Well, if they were to move, then all we would have is a big hay barn on an agricultural piece of property. And that would not be a bad thing, especially for us, because we do handle a lot, a lot of hay and sell a lot of hay. Another thing I'd like to point out to you that <clears throat> that when uh, we worked with the staff and looked at how many small farms there are in West Valley City, they're almost non-existent. There's a, such a small number of them anymore, and the reason that they're not being farmed and they're turning into all these other projects that come before you, whether it's housing or commercial or whatever it is, is because uh, farming a small piece of property is just not, just not economically feasible anymore. And one by one, they're all disappearing, and they will continue to disappear. And that's green space that we would not like to see disappear. And there's other cities around us in the county, and even we were looking at some ordinances up in Park City, and, and, and we're seeing how uh, governments are now trying to stop this trend, and they're buying that property. We have bond elections where we're trying to get more green space. Now this isn't a big green space, but it is a, a green space that we could probably preserve simply by doing something on it that can make it economically feasible. And if we can't do something like this, then it's inevitable that sooner or later it'll probably just end up in, in more houses. We would like to preserve the green space. Thank you. I have, am I through? No, there's no time limit. Okay. Uh, so give another point. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, just uh, briefly, you, you know, we, uh, a few days ago, we started having people that come into our business uh, sign a petition. It's not a scientific petition, not by any means, and we don't really have any plans to do anything with the petition. But we have a lot of people, several hundred people, that came in and they signed the petition when we explained to them what, uh, what we were trying to do because they were... Uh, in support of this, and and you know some of these people were a little bit grumpy towards West Valley City, and we took the advantage when they when they were a little bit negative towards us, and we explained to them how the the staff and the people from West Valley City have been very cooperative with us in helping us to uh, to put together something that we think will be positive, and and whether we get it or whether we don't get it, we felt like that we had been treated fairly and we, and we mentioned that to these people because we think that sometimes people don't think the way they ought to think about our city. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I have, I have a couple of questions. Mr. Proshin, uh, the, how many of these uh, units have currently been manufactured? Has there just been one that's been manufactured? We, we have a prototype and then we have one that we sent out. Okay. And, and, and you know, I would mention too, that we built the prototype in the shop in, on our farm. And I am certain that if you were to talk to anybody around there, they would not know that it, that happened. It was not noisy. It, 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 in fact, I lived there on the property. And I, I go out every night and have for 30 something years just to check my greenhouses and to make sure that everything is is okay and i could not tell if they were in there whether it's during the day or at night at any time i couldn't tell if they were in there unless i went in the building and saw them in there it is not noisy and it's and it's not a distraction we're not talking about a lot of semis coming in and out for this project i would be surprised if there's two or three semis a month that would come in there and bring materials. Most of the materials for this machine are outsourced, some in West Valley, some in the rest of the valley, some of them as far away as Wisconsin. And these parts, they, they move around in pickup trucks or the UPS guy brings them. And what we want to do is take all these parts and be able to assemble them, and assemble them there and test it on the site. You answered my second question was where did you assemble it and, and you assembled it there on the on the site. So. Right. All right. Thank you. Good questions. Any other questions while we have Mr. Potion in the microphone? Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who's come just curious, is there anyone who's come to speak against this proposal tonight? 
I, I see a few in the audience that I know are supportive. Just curious by the show of hands, who's supportive of this? Just by those in the audience. Um, when council and continue having people come up if you'd like. Uh, let's see, the public comment period is still open. Is there anyone else who has some additional information they would like to add? Your support has been noted through your hands, but there may be some additional information. My name is Matt Apotion. Um, my, I live in Kaysville, Utah, but I have, also have some property that I own near my dad there. Um, I'm the general manager of Firefly Equipment, and we're just so excited for this new venture that we're, we've started. We've, I've been to multiple trade shows the last year when we've just been introducing it and just presenting the ideas that we have. And you know, at first, at first look, people when they come to the trade shows start talking, "Oh, another harvester!" Tell us a little bit about it. And in my mind, I'm thinking, "Okay, you got two hours, you know, so I can really explain it to you." But um, we're, it, it takes a little bit of time to go over it and explain it, but it, it, it really is an innovative piece of equipment. It is world class, and we've got a, a great group of, of key people that, that we've started to, to put together. Um, I have put, I've posted on the workforce services, I posted five new jobs yesterday and today of people that we're wanting to hire in the near future. Uh, we've got a, and um, we're just excited for the project, and I vote my support for it as well. One Thanks. question while you're up, sir. As the, if we do become the world headquarters of Firefly Equipment, uh, will you have West Valley City or Salt Lake City on your letterhead, business cards, and website? West Valley City. Right answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they see how many get that wrong in practice, although in here they tend to get it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else that has some additional information they'd like to add? Come on up. Thank you. Thank the council and the woman counselor. My name is Odine Christensen. I live at 3591 South, 6545 West. We are West Valley, but we are still Hunter area. <laughs> Don't want you to forget that now, Steve. Okay. <clears throat> you know, potions, I'm not, they have explained what their machine is. It's amazing. The potions own and operate and have for many, many years on 35th over there. They're, they have a started with a nursery, then they got into the sob business. These people are great people. This is a second generation that's coming up, and for their son to be involved in the development of this thing is is wonderful. They are not. This is not going to be built on 31st or anything like that, where maybe. Not very good for some people, but it's back off of the road. The particular land that it's on is there's no access to it other than the people that own the property on 35th. So they're going to build it back in in the in the property, and so that they can have this business. This thing is very very specific. It's very well constructed and it's I can't they will not be manufacturing the metal and then what have it goes in there. But this is a thing that we're proud of in Hunter that we are getting something in there besides houses. Uh, we love it. This property would not be able to be developed for housing because it's landlocked. I think it's a, a wonderful thing that they're trying to do. We'd like to see, see it done. We'd like to see the city go on that thing that this is where it's manufactured. I think uh, we'll all be proud that we have something 
It's not noisy. There's no air pollution. There's really no good reason that I can think of. But that's your thing. That this cannot be arranged, arranged for them to have this building built on their property behind their nursery. And I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is the last hand we saw. I'll now close the public hearing and turn it over to you, Council, for your uh, thoughts or emotion. Yeah. I'll give you a comment and then a, and then a motion. And I just want to uh, thank everyone here that over there and that, that came out tonight. I think it's uh, refreshing in our democracy to see people get out and spend their Tuesday evening with their city council to come and be shapers and co-creators of our community. And so I applaud you all for coming and, and being involved in your neighborhoods and, and, and helping to shape our West Valley City. You know, the Apotians are a, a good West Valley story and a you know, homegrown business and have, have done a lot of great things and, and are good ambassadors uh, for us. Uh, in looking at this application and of this homegrown business and, and ways to, to help them improve, I think, you know, the first, the first question that comes up is, well, you know, how does it impact the neighbors? Well, they are the neighbors. And so I think when you live on the piece of property that you're trying to, to move and change it, and that, that uh, it tells you that the, that the impacts and, and the, the potential downfalls to the, the city and the community in general uh, are, are pretty low. And, and I know we, we strive very hard here in West Valley City to, to help accommodate uh, economic development and growing businesses. And uh, this, is, this is an exciting process. And you know if there is any concerns or small concerns, I think that the, the safeguard, getting down to the technical level, the safeguard of having it be uh, go through the conditional use process um, affords the city uh, you know, any, any controls or any problems that, that could or potentially arise or some unforeseen consequences of, of changing, uh, uh, amending this agriculture zone. So with that, uh, I would, Mayor, I would move for approval of Ordinance uh, 1318. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, and it sounds like, is there a comment? Some other Just a comment, uh, the, the mayor previously made a comment that we rarely overturn planning commission decisions. I did. <laughs> but uh, I, I am also in favor of this. I was gonna, uh, yeah. but when we do, it's for a good cause, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, but I think my comment was we, we rarely turn overturn planning commission decisions, which is true, especially ones that are unanimous or near unanimous. But going through the minutes of the Planning Commission, the first one, this was 3-3. I mean, it really could have been changed by, by who was there. So that's why it's important that we're here as a second body to, especially on those close Planning Commission decisions, to weigh it out and hear it out. And I, too, am very supportive. I, I applaud the potions. They came to me months ago to meet with the mayor just to say, Mayor, what do you think about this? And I, I appreciate them having the desire all the way through the process, because I heard from our staff too, that they wanted to do the right thing and do it the right way. And I also want to compliment the staff on the way they looked at uh, the innovative way of coming up with the zone text amendment and making it, frankly, as easy as this may not seem, the easiest way possible to get this approved. And so I appreciate the staff's effort in this too. So I, I'm supportive of the motion, and, and uh, we do want to while overturn planning commission decision. Anyone else like to make a comment? Okay, then uh, all in favor of approving Ordinance 13-18 say aye. 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 Those who oppose? It is unanimous, and a big congratulations to the Potion family and to West Valley City Future World Headquarters of Firefly Equipment. So we're thrilled to have you here, and thank you again, neighbors, for coming out and representing Fisher and, and husband. Thank you. Uh, we have a few resolutions tonight to go through, and by the way, we're not offended if anyone leaves early. We know the meetings get long. We love you anyway. Uh, resolution 13-54, Mr. Pyle, if you could please introduce that one. Thank you, sir. This resolution would authorize the police department to purchase evidence lockers and replacement of older ones that they have right now. They'd be using some dollars out of the current police department budget, $12,326, and $24,674 from a, a remaining funds from a Department of Justice grant. Thank you. Uh, Council, what's your pleasure on this one? I move for approval of resolution 13 54. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think we all agree it's good that police keep the evidence in the locker, so we better vote for this one. All in favor of approval say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that one passes. 1355, Mr. Pyle. Thank you, sir. This resolution approves or would approve the purchase of T signs for the new Ridge Golf Club uh, course. That would come out of the golf course maintenance budget, out of $43,160. Okay, uh, any questions or a motion on this one? May I move for approval of 1355? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I almost seconded it, and I realized I can't. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Okay, any discussion of this one? Or smart aleck comments, Corey? Oh, that's not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, all in favor of approving 1355, say aye. 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 That one also passes unanimously. Uh, 1356. Thank you, sir. This uh, resolution would award a contract to Westridge, or for Westridge Boulevard's cul-de-sac project ending up at the, also at the new golf course and would use almost $83,000 out of the golf course construction funds. Thank you. Is there a motion on this one? I'll be Corey to the... To the Smart outcome. The smart outcome. Why isn't this the Ridge, the Ridge Boulevard? West Ridge Boulevard. I guess we could change it. If he wants to come back and, and bring that. Is that what it was going to be? Well, I was curious. Well, we'd certainly be happy to entertain a request from the council for us well, to go back and do that if you'd like us. Well, or at least, I mean, I don't know what, how many. Is there? There's no addresses or businesses or that that on it, so I don't know if there's going to be, you know, many people's addresses aren't being changed. On, on that note, though, driving by the other day it has uh, Westridge Estates, the uh, or West, West the apartment subdivision. complex. Oh, the new one. Yeah, the new townhome complex. Town I can't remember. Nicole, do you? She stepped out. To okay, Nicole won't be available for answering that question at the moment. But when I saw that, I thought the other day, I thought, someone will at least tell the developer before we start making signs. We might have just found their wooden yeah. coming soon signs. But but they may want to consider changing it to match the golf course if they want to get to that point. So if you don't mind making that. Sure. Mayor, I'll go ahead and move for approval of 1356. Second that. Thank you both. Any discussion? I just, you know, note that, uh, you know, Kilgore has done work for the city before in the past, went through a competitive bid process, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, happy to have uh, employ their services for this uh, West Ridge Cold Any other comments? I would like to, to know that not everything has to have the same name. Sometimes these things are easier to distinguish and find if they don't all have the same name. Especially if you don't know whether it's alphabet of ties under T for the or R for Ridge. Okay, any other comments? Nicole, you're missing all the fun here. We're the Ridge, West Ridge. Well, doesn't the Ridge have a capital G in it? Yeah, yeah. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose. Okay, 1356 passed unanimously. 57, Wayne. Thank you, sir. This will be for the approval of the road impact reimbursement agreement between the city and Sperry Trading, LLC, for, qual uh, for certain improvements that uh, Sperry Trading put in on the road at 3200 West, uh, close to their uh, place of business, and would come from road impact fees and would be in the amount of $19,697.25. Thank you. Council, a motion? Motion to approve resolution 13-57. Thank you, Mr. Wren. Second. Second. Any comments? Okay, all in favor of 1357 say aye. Aye. Okay, that one also passes. We have a consent agenda here. Any motions there? Mayor, I move that we approve the four uh, resolution items of the consent agenda. Second. Thank you both. All in favor? Aye. aye. Uh, any need for executive session tonight? Okay, then we come to item 11, which is to adjourn.